So in this example, it is actually generating the chunk every frame. The chunk is made up of 64 by 64 by 64 voxels, generating every frame. The meshing takes approximately 160 microseconds, but the voxelization, or generating the data, takes roughly one millisecond per frame. This is currently executing on a GTX 1050 with three gigabytes of VRAM, and as you can see, you can make it blocky looking. The shadows are a bit um, buggy right now because I haven't implemented cascaded shadow mapping, so the size is limited. But if someone would were to implement shadow cascaded shadows, this would look a lot better because you could have a greater distance for shadows. So at the moment, I'm just editing some parameters in the code to change how the uh, terrain looks. This is all executing um, on my custom game engine built on WGPU and Rust. So every shader is actually a GLSL shader. It's a compute shader and I have actually four compute shaders, one for generating the voxel data, one for meshing and two others for memory management because this is GPU driven. So everything needs to stay on the GPU or well, I try to make everything stay on the GPU at least. In this second example, I will actually be generating a larger landscape with dynamic chunk management. So every chunk is actually pre-allocated at the start of the um, engine initialization step, and it's uh, just reused over time. So right now, there are no new entities. The chunks are just being reused. So um, same resolution, 64 by 64 by 64, but now we have a render distance that is currently set to 19 times 19. Volume of chunks that are visible is pretty large. So as the player moves forwards, the chunks in front of them will be generated. I currently generate one chunk per frame to limit the frame drop, because this is actually taking a hit on my poor GTX 1050. So I have to limit that, but if you had a beefier card like an RTX 3080, or something like that, this would be able to run at much faster speeds, for example, five milliseconds per frame, as my friend tested on their machine. I'm currently using two noises for the voxel density function. One is some FBM cellular noise, and the other is an erosion noise taken from a shader toy that will be linked in the description. So I am just blending between both shaders and generating the voxels based on that. So I am currently moving up and down to unload, forcefully unload the chunks and forcefully reload them to show you how the fading system works. So what it does is it keeps track of the time that each chunk has lived for in seconds and it fades uh, or it makes a dithering effect based on that. And every voxel or every cube, one could say, because this is actually surface nets algorithm, so it's actually generating a um, cuboid mesh first and then smoothing it afterwards. Um, each cube is approximately one meter. Um, its size is approximately one meters, but slightly below that because each chunk is actually not um, a size to a, of a power of two. It's actually um, 62 uh, meters wide because I to try to keep uh, the compute shader to execute as fast as possible, I made it so I sacrificed the fact that each chunk needs to be a non-power of two size to keep my voxel textures a power of two size, which would be better for the compute shader. And this is the same exact map and density function, but with a without the smoothing applied. So you could see all the um, non-smoothed cubes. Now, without any shadows, because I disable shadows temporarily for testing purposes, without any shadows, you can't really tell if um, something is far, like your depth perception isn't as good. So it might look a bit weird on recording, but when I tested this out without OBS, it looks pretty, pretty fine. And this is all executing on a GTX 1050, so no ray tracing capabilities or anything, it's just all voxelized mesh, meshes triangulated each frame. Takes approximately one millisecond for the whole, for a whole chunk to execute. But 
again, since I'm using OBS, it's taking a hit on my GPU, which uh, makes <clears throat> the voxelization and rendering a bit slower. So I made it so it prioritizes chunks that you can see in the frustrum. So chunks that are not currently being seen by the camera will not be rendered or will not even be generated as a fact. So if I were to turn very fast, the like that, chunks would not be able to generate fast enough. And there's also a distance limit. One could theoretically implement some sort of LOD system, but the hard part is since I use surface nets, I wouldn't be able to implement a um, I wouldn't be able to remove the gaps between different levels of LOD, which is what I tried fixing that in my old implementation in the Unity game engine, but that didn't really work out. So I'm just staying with uh, fixed size chunks since it works pretty well. And yeah, thank you for watching and you can leave your questions down below.